Hello everyone, um, welcome to where Norwich stay um, when they come to this part of the world. Hope it's all been uh, okay where you are. I've just watched two full 90 minutes against Darmstadt for two separate Norwich City sides, with, uh, back to back, which means my brain is a little bit fried. Oh, there's some um, Mario Francis just jogging back. There he is, look, right at the background there. Don't know where he's off to, but that was, of course, uh, games against his former sides. Uh, his former side in, in Darmstadt, so um, you know, a bit, bit of a probably important um, weekend for him. Um, I, th I think he was a little bit frustrated as well. It didn't, didn't uh, probably didn't go as well as he would have liked, but he, not to say he was bad. And it's pre-season, so um, Norwich won the first game three-two. Um, it was probably a stronger Darmstadt side. Uh, it was a, probably a stronger Norwich side in general, although it was very mix and match really. Um, Norwich were three 0 up, very clinical. Um, scored some lovely goals. Um, there were some really promising signs in terms of certainly getting um, getting used to how to make the most of um, Shemi Poiteta and um, some real promise there. Uh, God, it almost feels like I'm struggling to remember it. Um, Alex Tetti played at centre back again as well, and clearly is going to be an option next season. But but also I mean, probably less interesting talking to Alex about it because I think he 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 has always felt the fear of playing at centre back you know make a mistake something goes wrong and, and that's an issue so he's almost having to get himself over that so that he can perform in that in that position better and um, we haven't really seen him play there in the championship to be fair most of the times he's played there's been in the Premier League so you'd expect it to be a real a really tough gig and it's not quite the same in the championship so I mean certainly it's interesting that Norwich haven't tactically altered much really they haven't fiddled around a lot they have um daniel farker's kept it quite straightforward in terms of what it is you know it's four two three one these are what we do when we press when it's a three man of two man press um this is how we defend set pieces you know this is how we <laughs> don't joke uh, but you know this is how we uh, press lower lower down the pitch um so it's all kind of quite set and so he hasn't really changed that or adapted that much because ultimately he wants the new signings to get what that is as soon as possible um, so they are tweaking how they're going to do things and, and obviously the players themselves change that dynamic because of the strengths and how the players will look for those strengths which is what's happened with Boisheta but um, Boisheta, I haven't decided how to pronounce that yet um, but yeah so the, but it's kept it fairly rigid so the, the sort of introduction for the new players has, has been good and they've clearly helped remove any hangover at this point in the season but they kind of would because everything's optimistic at this point I'm already aware that once the season gets going the state of Norwich's start is going to be hugely important and how they deal with any setbacks is going to be hugely important that is when you really start to see whether they whether there is a hangover in their attitudes and, and also I'm, I'm not talking about like the first two or three games I'm talking about after a month after two months that they're the points at which um, you really have to you, you can only really fairly judge it um, so the second yes yeah, first game they, they won 3-2 they are 3 0 up conceded two really sloppy goals late on I don't think Daniel really minded Daniel Farker really minded because it gave him something to moan about and I don't think he really wants a perfect pre-season because you don't want complacency when you get going in the championship so I can understand that completely um, the second game was a bit of a non-event not because the players were you know were playing their second game but just I don't know if we were all tired. I don't know what it was, but um, uh, yeah, it was just, uh, it was a bit more disjointed is probably the best way of putting it. Um, Norwich had their moments and, and had some decent chances. Darmstadt didn't have a lot, but they did have the best chance in the second half that they really should have scored. Um, um, but that, that, that game was probably most noteworthy for, um, most noteworthy for Daniel Barden getting his sort of first team a debut as in first team outing in a, in a public setting obviously it's not a competitive game but um, his next performance will be because I would uh, uh, thoroughly expect him to be the starting goalkeeper at Luton in the Carabao Cup um, most of you won't know a lot about him I don't really know a lot about him per se other than he came through um, Arsenal's uh, youth ranks um, he was signed by Norwich a couple of years ago I think as a, as a youth team player he's still only 18, 19, 20 max and uh, last season I think he was on loan at, at Bury. Um, in Suffolk so a real low 
low-key known. Um, but he is with, obviously, Tim Krull, being with the Netherlands, Michael McGovern away with Northern Ireland. Um, he is next in line at the moment, which, which does put him ahead of a couple of other goalkeepers who are slightly older, but um, it's brilliant for him. And I actually thought you could see why. He was confident. Um, he didn't have much to deal with in the air, but he claimed the one or two crosses he needed to. His distribution was very good, which I suppose I, I was kind of keen to, to see because I imagine that's one of the deciding factors for Daniel, and, and it was very good. Um, he's very slight and lean, but he's, he's very young, so he's, he's not going to have filled out yet. Um, but he's very vocal and, um, yeah, very promising, I thought. So as much as you can judge it, of course, um, I look forward to seeing him play against Luton, which is what I'm expecting to happen now. Uh, Jamal Lewis, of course, played as well. He started the second game. Great to see him um, out there after um, a few niggles. I think I asked Daniel this, and ideally Jamal wouldn't be going straight to play for Northern Ireland over the international break because he's, he's played 70 minutes of, of pre-season and that's it. So it's still a bit raw um, in terms of getting him up to speed and for next season. And also, he, you know, he looked a bit rusty. Not bad, just you know, crossing opportunities and whatnot. So, um, but hopefully he'll come through that unscathed and actually get a few more minutes and game time and be ready then to hit the, hit the ground running when it comes to uh, playing for Norwich on the, on the other side of it. Uh, no Emmy or Nell Hernandez today. Emmy Buendia and Nell Hernandez, both just minor knocks, really. Um, no big issues. Uh, Emmy is suspended for the first two competitive fixtures, so Luton and Huddersfield, off the back of his sending off, of course. Um, and NL, I think, will be fit, and Daniel's perfectly happy as just being patient and not risking them, really, especially as both um, aren't... Well, they're certainly... as O'Neill isn't going anywhere for the uh, Luton game, <laughs> and it's uh, it should be a good enough team to beat Luton still, but it's um, obviously you don't want to run any risks. And that's pre-season done. Norwich won four of their five games. Have I got that right? Yeah, four. they won four of their five games. They did not lose one. They only conceded in one of them. So that's four clean sheets as well. So lots of promise. Um, lots of reasons to be optimistic. I like a lot of what I've seen from a lot of people. But it means absolutely jack all <laughs> at this point. Um, because it all comes down to when the, the real stuff starts and people's uh, attitudes and things like that. So... Um, I'll give any any negatives. I will give a free pass for now because I think it's just not worth it. We'll see how it looks when we get into the proper stuff, which is, of course, at Luton in the Carabao Cup first round on Saturday at Kenilworth Road. I will see you there. Uh, last shout out, if there's anything you want me to um, include in video, um, in, in my video output over the new season, any ideas for features, whether you want live Q&As or you want to submit questions that I answer, um, any of those stuff, things you think I'm missing a trick on, and that's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Periscope, whichever. Let me know, and I'll give them a think. Just leave a message or a comment, um, and I'll come up with my own ideas, of course, as well, and um, we'll see what we can do. Uh, and anything else you want to comment, just pop it in there. Um, but in the meantime, thank you so much. Give The Athletic a look over the coming weeks. This week, is there's some really good stuff on there that I'm really proud of, um, but also over the next week or two, uh, as the season gets going, there's some stuff there that I'm hoping you'll really enjoy as well. So um, that is theathletic.co.uk, uh, I think. And you'll find all of our Norwich stuff there um, and whichever for the new season. Um, that is me done from Germany. I'm tired. I walked two and a half kilometres for two and a half hours this morning um, for no particular reason. Um, so it's time that I get some dinner and prepare to go home. Uh, I look forward to seeing my family and then I will see you guys all on the other side. In the meantime, take care, hope you're all safe, and see you very soon.